If you were to look at Britain on a map today, you'd be forgiven for thinking that its borders only encompass those of the British Isles. But if you look at the world, you will find that there are 14 overseas territories where the British government still holds power. From Gibraltar at the entrance of the Mediterranean to the Falkland Islands in the South Atlantic, these are the last remaining possessions of Britain's once mighty empire. At the height of its territorial control a little over 100 years ago, the British Empire covered one quarter of the globe's landmass and ruled almost a third of the world's population. It was the empire on which the sun never set. But how did such a small island nation become the largest and most powerful empire the world has ever seen? This is the history of the British Empire. The foundations of the British Empire were laid long before the state of Britain even formally existed. The dominant power in the British Isles throughout much of its history has been the Kingdom of England. With a well-developed economy and military force to match, England during the medieval and early modern periods came to rule over the smaller independent kingdoms in Wales and parts of Ireland. Although to the north, the Kingdom of Scotland remained a fiercely proud and independent nation, bitterly resisting frequent invasions from its powerful southern neighbor. By the early 17th century, Elizabeth I of England had issued several trading and exploration commissions to English adventurers, with the intention of exploring and colonizing new territories yet to be claimed by other European powers. The likes of Sir Francis Drake and Sir Martin Frobisher claimed many lands in the name of England, but these were not followed up with settlements. The first English colony established in North America at Roanoke Island in 1585 failed dramatically, with the colonists mysteriously disappearing. Elizabeth also granted several royal charters to joint stock companies, established specifically for the purpose of developing overseas trade. Companies such as the Levant Company and the East India Company were granted monopolies on all English trade to and from these areas. When Elizabeth first died in 1603, the throne of England passed to James VI of Scotland. Upon his ascension to the throne, James became the king of both Scotland and England through the union of the crowns. However, the two kingdoms remained distinct and were ruled separately. As King James looked to build further on the attempts of his predecessor to establish overseas colonies, various types of colony structures were established. A crown colony was directly ruled by the monarch themselves, typically administered by a royally appointed governor and supported by a local council. A charter colony was ruled under a corporate charter, granting colonists more political liberty compared to other colonies. A proprietary colony was governed by an individual, typically the head of a joint stock company, with responsibilities to shareholders. Over time, these proprietary colonies became increasingly difficult to manage and transitioned to crown colonies instead. An important yet often overlooked development in England's overseas expansion is the plantation of Ulster, which saw Protestant settlers from Scotland and England transported to parts of Northern Ireland during the early years of King James's reign. Throughout the 1600s, the Kingdom of England expanded its overseas colonies in North America and the Caribbean, some entirely new ventures, while others were annexed from rival foreign powers like New York, which was seized from the Dutch in 1665. England also significantly developed its trading networks in Africa and the East Indies, with the building of factories and fortified trading posts. A critical component to this mercantile success was the creation of the Royal African Company in 1660, which over the subsequent decades became the leading participant in the transatlantic slave trade. During this period, Scotland also began to establish overseas colonies of its own, inspired by the successful endeavors of the English. Unfortunately, almost all these attempts ended in failure, with colonies in Nova Scotia, Cape Breton, and Carolina barely lasting a few years. The most abject failure of Scotland's colonization attempts, however, came in 1698 with the Darien Scheme, an attempt to establish a colony controlling the overland trade route of the Isthmus of Panama. Despite these setbacks, England continued to expand its overseas colonies throughout the 17th and 18th centuries. With conflicts such as the War of the Spanish Succession and the Seven Years' War, resulting in further territorial concessions from rival powers. In North America, the British captured Quebec in 1759, effectively ending French colonial efforts on the continent with the annexation of New France by 1760. The Treaty of Paris, which ended the Seven Years' War in 1763, also ceded Caribbean islands and territories to Britain, 
further solidifying its position as the dominant colonial and maritime power of the age. Throughout its history, the British Empire would be powered by mastery of the high seas through naval supremacy and indomitable mercantile trade that facilitated the exchange of goods, ideas, and people across vast distances. This maritime dominance enabled Britain to establish and maintain colonies and trading posts around the world, extending its influence to every continent and shaping global commerce, culture, and politics for centuries. The British Navy, often referred to as the Royal Navy, played a pivotal role in asserting and safeguarding British interests overseas. With its formidable fleet of warships, the Royal Navy ensured the security of British trade routes, protected colonial territories, and projected power in times of conflict. The ability to control key sea lanes and establish naval bases in strategic locations allowed Britain to expand its sphere of influence and assert its dominance over rival European powers. In addition to military prowess, the British Empire's success was also driven by its robust mercantile trade networks. British merchants and trading companies such as the East India Company, the Hudson's Bay Company, and the Royal African Company played instrumental roles in establishing lucrative trade routes and exploiting the natural resources of colonial territories. The exchange of goods, including spices, textiles, precious metals, and enslaved labor fueled economic growth in Britain and enrich the empire's coffers. Moreover, the British Empire's maritime dominance facilitated the spread of ideas, technologies, and cultural influences across continents. Through trade and exploration, British merchants, sailors, and settlers interacted with diverse peoples and civilizations, contributing to the exchange of knowledge and the diffusion of Western values and institutions. Overall, mastery of the high seas and mercantile trade were central pillars of the British Empire's global hegemony, enabling Britain to become the world's preeminent imperial power and leaving a legacy that continues to shape the modern world.